nugget for you guys. I've been enjoying kind of dropping these little nuggets in on my podcast because as many of you would know, if you have been clued into the podcast and you've been listening to some of the kind of life update episodes, if you haven't listened to the life update episodes and you kind of want to know more about just life updates, then um, we'll link some of the recent ones below from this year so that you can make sure that you listen to them um, and kind of occlude in with those things so you don't get like a shock to the system when things change. <laughs> but um, I am giving you guys these nuggets on the podcast, one, so that you can also have a break from needing to be on social media to get the nuggets each week and frankly each day on my Instagram story because I'm always posting my juicy chicken nuggets as I call them. Um, on my Instagram story and so that you can just kind of get off your phone you can listen to these nuggets and I'm not like trapped by the one minute Instagram rule on stories um, and go for a walk and kind of tune in and not worry about they're going to expire after 24 hours because I fucking hate that shit um, and it also allows me hi buddy it also allows me to create content that you guys can continue to f refer back to months and years later and not have it expire within 24 hours so anyway today the nugget is around perfectionism being a true trauma response. So perfectionism really keeps us stuck in this place of not enoughness, right? It's this attempt to feel like if we are perfect, which we never actually end up feeling or attaining, if we are perfect, then we will be loved and chosen and wanted and validated. And if we're not quote unquote perfect, which per perfection is a subjective anyway, if we are not perfect, then to our nervous system, because this is about the response, the trauma response of perfectionism, to our nervous system, if we are not perfect, something bad essentially is going to happen. And now this is often rooted in our wiring and in our nervous system our brainstem, which is our nervous system, it's often rooted in us from a very young age. And it may have been from one instance, but often it's from a collection of instances. And if you haven't gone through anything really traumatic, it doesn't mean that you have no trauma, right? Because trauma is literally about how you responded and perceived the situation in front of you. So Two people go through the exact same situation and one person finds it that, it, you know, it becomes a wound for them and it becomes something that actually was trauma inducing. And for the other person, they, their body felt completely safe and nothing happened. Now, if you've continued to get this message when you were younger that, you know, you are loved more of, more or more often when you behave in X, Y, and Z way, you can then internalize that is as I am more loved when I'm perfect and I'm less loved when I'm not perfect. A lot of us received conditional love as children because we really are, and like, go fucking us, we really are the first generation of, let's say, parents that are coming in with a whole new way of parenting. And I talked about this in an episode, I can't remember which one, but Olivia will link it if she knows in the description. I talked about this in an episode semi-recently that I am not pro this kind of like really soft parenting where there is absolutely no boundaries because that actually doesn't help to regulate the child and it doesn't help to teach the child self-regulation. Now, obviously, a, you know, a six month old does not need to learn self-regulation, but we won't go into that. My point is, is like, you got to be discerning with that shit, but boundaries as a parent is actually really important to instill. My point is, is that for a lot of us, we received conditional love as children because our parents didn't know any better. They didn't know there wasn't the education back then, like to the mass, to the masses, um, that, you know, when, when your child comes back with a D grade, if you now punish him, they are now going to carry that through the rest of their lives where they are not going to feel successful enough, good enough, smart enough, like hot enough, whatever it is that turns into. So for a lot of us, it hasn't necessarily been just one instance that caused this perfectionism wound, but it's actually been a collection of micro traumas that have ended up being one big fat issue, <laughs> one big fat wound of you feeling safer when you are aiming for perfectionism. What we have to realize firstly is that Perfectionism is so subjective and you will never actually feel like you have achieved the goal because once you get to that goal and you think, okay, I'm just going to do this and then it'll be perfect enough. Then you're going to get there and be like, oh wait, no, then I have to do this and then it's going to be perfect enough, right? So you'll always be on this hamster wheel and wanting more and more and more and more and for it to be more and more perfect and more and more perfect because you'll always feel like it's just not enough because what we have to realize is there is no end goal of, okay, now it's perfect enough right? 
you'll always find something that you, that you could make it better. Somebody's different opinion could then make you feel like, oh my God, it's not enough. It's not perfect. And that sends you back down that spiral. And so when we are constantly aiming for something that we will never achieve, we then never feel like we're achieving. And as humans, and as humans that need motivation and that need to be self-motivated and that like to achieve things, it's very normal human desire and human need. If you don't feel like you're achieving things, we often see in, in I, not we, I often see in my clients that those that have this perfectionism tendency also have the wound of not feeling enough, obviously. And they often also have procrastination issues and self-sabotage issues because they, they will start to procrastinate on things because they can't make it perfect enough to be happy with it. So then the procrastination loops in, right? The bottom line is that trying to make whatever it is perfect, whether it's an email, whether it's work, whether it's your Instagram profile for your business, whether it's your relationship, whether it's your body, whatever it is, trying to make something perfect is avoiding something else. And that avoidance could be that you're trying to avoid getting in trouble, you're trying to avoid or you have this fear of something bad is going to happen. You're trying to avoid abuse. And it may not actually be that you're in a, an abusive relationship. It just could be that's your trauma response that you're unaware of. But deep down, your body is trying to avoid abuse because as a child, you were emotionally, physically or mentally abused when you weren't perfect enough, right? Now, obviously, if you are currently in an abusive relationship, mentally, emotionally, physically, whatever it is, you may be currently in that relationship and currently experiencing this feeling of I need to be perfect all the time. I need to have my shit together because if I don't, I'm then going to, you know, get hurt. And so it can be very hard to get rid of that perfectionism when you are in that environment that is inducing it. You are in the trauma. And so your body has one job right now and that's to keep you safe. So it wouldn't work to try and not become perfect, if that makes sense. The first thing in an extreme situation like that, or even in a not so extreme situation, depending on what's actually happening in your life, is to create the internal sense of power and safety to obviously get out of those sorts of situations. Now, let's also remember to be discerning about is the situation actually bad? I'm not talking about like being physically abused. It could be something else. Is the situation actually bad or is that I'm not speaking up for my needs and therefore I'm saying it's bad because my needs aren't getting met, but actually I'm not doing what I should be doing, which is speaking up for my needs in order for them to get met. So as I always say, please be, please be discerning. I'm not going to put a million disclaimers on this because you are adults um, and you need to practice discerning and you need to practice taking what I say with a grain of salt and really, really, um, what the fuck is that truck doing on the street? Um, and really, really just thinking twice about things, right? Um, my point is, depending how you internalized, not being perfect as a kid will reflect why you're feeling the need to make things perfect now, right? So it's really about what is the root issue that's causing perfectionism to be a symptom of something much deeper. The perfectionism is simply the manifestation of trauma that hasn't been healed in your body. Okay, so all in all to wrap this up, your perfectionism is keeping you safe from something. Perfectionism can cause us to inhibit our self-expression. It can cause us to not be our authentic selves because our authentic selves could get in trouble and could be dangerous and could be shamed. It could be preventing you from rejection. The perfectionism could be preventing you from, you know, losing your job because you think that if you don't do things absolutely perfectly, you'll lose your job. It could be preventing you from getting ridiculed by even your parents. You could be 35 years old listening to this, but you are literally trying to be perfect because you're still afraid of getting ridiculed by your parents. It could be that you think not being perfect will mean that your partner leaves you, but they actually don't, right? And they shouldn't. There could be a million and one reasons for you why perfectionism is showing up. But the key thing to understand is that perfectionism, much like procrastination, um, much like you behaving in whatever ways elude this feeling of I'm not enough, is a response to something much, much deeper. Your body is doing its job. Your body is keeping you safe. The question for you, though, is do you want to have freedom and safety in no longer needing 
to constantly stay in this trauma response. Like, I don't understand what these what these trucks are doing on this street. Like, I'm kind of weirded out by this right now. There was like a petrol truck like going down the street or something. I'm like, um, you're not welcome here. Um, my point is, my point is with perfectionism is you want to figure out and then heal with me the root issue so that you can be free of that and so that you can feel so inherently safe to be yourself, to be like, that's good enough and to not need everything to be perfect in order for your nervous system to be relaxed and to be safe. That doesn't mean, everyone, that you don't do a good job. That doesn't mean that you don't take pride in your work. This does not mean that you don't, you know, tidy up the house because it makes you feel good. It's about you realizing, well, where is the line for me between I'm tidying up the house because it makes me feel good and I'm tidying up the house because unless everything is put away perfectly and so tidy, I am so dysregulated. I am so stressed out. Now, what I like to say to my clients, and we do some work around this with some of them that really cannot be in like a messy space. We all like to be in a tidy space. Like it is a universal thing that everyone does better in a tidy space, right? Like your head is clearer, your energy is clearer, of course, of course. But what's also nice, what is really nice is to still be a high functioning adult even when things aren't perfect. If you want to have children, well, you better let go of needing a fucking tidy space all the time. And if you don't, if you can't feel that sense of safety in your body and a nervous system regulation when there is a little bit of mess, what will happen is that you could then end up projecting that or internalizing all that and like and suffocating it in yourself when you have children and there's fucking toys everywhere. Being able to not need these like perfect things it allows more freedom. We we want to want them. Sorry, we want for us to be like, yeah, I would like a tidy place, but I don't like actually need a tidy place in order to stay as a sane human. You want to figure out where that difference is. Like you would like for your relationship to be X, Y, Z, A, B, C, but if you're having a bad week with it, you still feel safe in your body. You still are able to stay in your feminine energy or your masculine energy. You can still focus. Your gut health doesn't go fucking haywire. You don't have headaches. we That's where I like to get my clients is not this place of perfect. Is not like, okay, well, we're just going to keep you in. Well, the space always has to be tidy because that's what keeps you feeling safe. No, because then you are continuously telling yourself and validating the trauma. You're validating the trauma response, right? Instead, it's like, yeah, validate the trauma response. Like you're so safe as a human to have that response to these things. And let's get you to a place where if you can have a tidy house that day, fucking amazing. But you don't need to have a tidy house in order for you to have a great day. That is the ideal place to be in. Because then you are not so reactive and dependent on external things for your internal feelings. Your internal feelings stay stable no matter what is going on externally. And that is the place where you will feel the most sense of safety and power and alignment and groundedness in your body. That is that place. Okay. So perfectionism is a trauma response. And if you want to get rid of it, you know where to find me. All right. I will see you guys next week for Wednesday's juicy episode. As usual, please share this episode with your friends on your Instagram story, all the good places. It really does support me. I love to, sh- I love to see them. I love to share them. And it helps other people be reminded of, oh, I need to listen to that episode because it was really good. When you tell your Instagram people it was good and tag me and then I share it, it tells all of my Instagram people, make sure you listen to this episode because it helps somebody else. It's going to help you too. All right. I will see you guys later. Have a good rest of your day.